Hello YouTube and welcome to another general vlog video. Today our video will be doing a review on the Horton Team Realtree HD175 crossbow. Now this is the crossbow of my choice and I'll give you some of the reasons why. This bow is approximately 10 years old so it's tried and trued and tested a lot. This is the HD175 I wanted a bow, I didn't want to do the 150s. I wanted a little more power than the 150s. I wanted to be able to drop them quickly. I wanted to be able to do a decent kill and not have to track and stand a chance of not being able to find it and wounding a deer. Now some of the features that I like on this bow are, I love the Horton three dot red sight. I love the trajectory. Even though I really don't use that, I have the option if I ever need it. And I'll explain why I don't use that. The woods that I hunt is very thick. I have this bow set up at my three red dots. The top I have set up at 50 foot, not yards, foot. The bottom I have set up, or the middle I have set up at about 60 and the bottom I have set up at 75 foot. That is about as far as I get to shoot where I hunt. So that's the way I've got mine set in. I love the idea that I can go brighter or dimmer on the three dots. I have had that cause a problem. In low light, if you go too bright to begin with, it kind of blurs out on you, but that has nothing to do really with the brand of the scope. That's just the way that the red dots work. Anyways, once again, this is the Team Realtree. It's in Realtree pattern. I do have the cocker rope on it, as you can see. The reason I, I require everybody to use, or I guess I don't require, do I? I guess the, the reason that I would suggest for everybody to use the cocker rope is, if you'll notice on my bow, you'll see green marks. If you just grab this bow and cock it with your hands, you can go off to the right or off to the left just a little bit and you don't know it. And that can cause your shot to be off to the left or to the right. And with the, the cocker rope is, is set up all on these little things here turn in there. So, and then you come back here and it wraps around this. So you're getting an even pull every time. Now that did not come with the bow. I purchased that separately. But as far as the bow, the bow is very accurate. <clears throat> uh, a couple things that we'll get into. It's got a great safety and fire switch on it. Uh, it is a little noisy, as you can hear. So when you're in the woods and you're getting ready to fire, don't just go like that because they're going to hear that. Just I grab it on both sides and go forward with it slowly like that so they don't hear that. The bow itself, like I said, I love this handle down here. It's The grip is easier to do the way that I hunt from a stand. Now I bought this bow, I do believe it come from Walmart, that's a Walmart sticker. <clears throat> approximately 10 years ago and I think it was like $449 on sale at the end of the season and you have all your owner's manual to read and just you know all your information don't dry fire of course one of the other things that I like about it, it has this little valley right here and as you can see down here you'll see a part of a velcro I put a magnet on that when I'm using a lighted knock and it it's not in way of any of the fletchings or anything when it comes out. And it'll always light up your knock when you're using that. And it's also, of course, got the foot stirrup. And I like that the fact that it comes factory. And I'll try to do this all one-handed, which is very hard to do. I'm going to turn the bow upside down now. I like that it comes with a quick detach for your quiver. You just push one little button and you can slide your quiver off if I can figure out which way it slides off oh, just like that <clears throat> it'll slide right off there so once you're in the stand you can 
take your quiver off and you got more movability with it. It's This is kind of bulky and, and then it's not in your way. The quiver that comes with it is the one that's on here now. It holds three bolts and it just absolutely works out perfect for me. Now I'm gonna flip it back around and show you one thing about the scope. Now I did have to replace the scope on this because this is where your battery goes. And as you can see, it's, it's a little chewed up already. Sometimes if you don't take the battery out fairly often, this right here, the rubber seal in there will seal to it and you cannot get it open. That happened to me. This battery has probably been in there about three years now. So as long as you keep it turned off, the batteries last forever. I think they're a 1032 battery. They're kind of a larger battery. They're almost the size of this whole housing. Now this is a rail scope. And what I mean by that is let me walk around over here and I'll show you. This is a regular scope that I bought for it. It's just a true, true glow scope. But if you'll take these off, you'll see that this is, I don't know how many times I got to do this. There we go. This is the type that goes on a rail, like any type of a rail, like it goes on a shotgun or anything of that nature. That will not fit on this because of the trajectory. It looks more like this on the bottom of the scope. And it goes down in the side of this and allows that trajectory. If you watch that scope as I crank that trajectory up, you'll see that, that that scope starts moving up. Right in here, you'll see it start moving up. And there it went back down. So I am going to make positive sure I have it set on zero. So if you want to put a regular scope on it, then you've got to get one of these extra rails that go in down in there for the trajectory. That is probably where the spring lays to let it allow to do that by itself. So in order to use one of these, you gotta have one of these. If not, you have to order the Horton one that has the trajectory, <clears throat> which I did and I think it was 25, 30 bucks. It wasn't stupid expensive. And this is my second one that I've been through in 10 years on it. The first one was kind of my fault. Same way with this. Uh, it's still the same battery that's been in there for three years or so, but I do take this lid off every once in a while, at least a couple times a year. Anyways, it's a good, accurate, consistent shooting bow. Even after being in storage all summer long when it's not hunting season, as soon as I pull it out and I go to sight it in, very minor little tweaks, if any, have to be made. That's due to the stability of, of the scope. And I mean, I cannot move that at all. Up, down, nothing until that trajectory knob is twisted. Going through the woods, hitting on small trees or getting caught in briars or anything, it doesn't seem to affect this bow at all. This is just a great setup. I have had other bows previous to this and other bows since this one that I've tried. This is a heavy bow. I do not know what it weighs in at. You might have to look that part up, but it is a heavy bow. So this may not be your bow choice if you're stock hunting for all day long. You know, you might want something a little lighter weight, but this is just, it's built like a tank and it acts like a tank and it will knock the deer down quick. Anyways, that's my personal review on the Horton Team Rail Tree HD 175. If you like this, do me a favor. Click that like button right over here and the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up. That's your like. And share me right down here. And once again, I'm having a hard time pointing here. Share. Share me on your social media pages, like your Facebook or your Pinterest or your Twitter or whatever, so other people can also see this video, and it'll help them out. Anyways, once again, this is General Vlog Videos, and this is our product review on a Horton HD 175 Team Realtree. Thank you.